so I know her from those days. <laughs> she does lots of stewardship projects with many people in the community. Pleasure to work with, great lady. I can't find your bio. Okay. I haven't met Terry Eccles yet. Hi, Terry. It's nice to meet you. I don't have anything to say about you. <laughs> Natural Resources for 35 years and has been retired for eight um, and has lived on Long Lake his whole life. Well, cottaging there. Cottaging, cottaging sorry, cottage. cottaging. And his grandfather had a farm there and his dad built on that property the cottage. So he has been uh, a lifelong resident there. Cottaging. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, it's so great to see so many of you. Uh, I'm not used to being up here. Normally I'm running around and around the back. But I think from both of us, we're very excited to share this project with you today. Um, this project uh, had a lot of partners and... Um, oh, I have the thing. You have the thing. the down. Down, thank you. So it's, it's a little bit of a fairy tale story, I'd say. Um, we had some funding from Fisheries and Oceans Canada, the Recreational Fisheries Conservation Partnerships Program. We had a three-year uh, grant from them, and this was in our third year. And my original walleye bed project fell through, so I was looking for um, a lake to work with and try to enhance some walleye spawning beds. And Terry gave me a call one day, just out of the blue, and um, expressed interest in um, w enhancing some of their walleye spawning beds that they have already started um, enhancing previously. So that's how the partnership was born. <laughs> so Terry's just going to mention a bit about um, how he contacted us and a bit about uh, our site visit. Yeah. Push the button. Button on the bottom. Turn screen. So, uh, it just by two years ago, we had never heard of Watersheds Canada. <laughs> Didn't know you existed, and uh, we found out about you. Some of our association members, including myself, infiltrated a Charbot Lake Association meeting. We went over to kind of nose around what they were doing. <laughs> Actually, the area was a FOCA was doing a presentation and we were debating whether or not to join FOCA. The Terry's known we ended up joining FOCA. So <laughs> but during that meeting, Watersheds Canada name came up and that they had done a walleye spawning shoal. I said, oh, that's interesting. We had done some work on a water spawning shoal, or the walleye shoals before, but labor intensive, bucket brigades, five gallon pails with putting the stone in, taking boats, going back and forth, sore backs at the end of the day. So we heard about this, and uh, so I went on, uh, checked your, your page on, and saw all the neat projects you folks do. So out of the blue, I phoned mm -hmm. Melissa, that's when she got the phone call. Happened to have some cash. <laughs> our association was interested. And so I went back, we had a meeting very soon after that, our annual meeting, presented it, the proposal to them, do we want to take advantage of this money? And bottom line is they said yes. I was looking for volunteers as well. <laughs> so I had an idea in mind of using a barge during the summer months. Um, because uh, there is a local contractor that has a barge, but he could load it onto the barge. He does island work, and, and it's a very large barge. It takes heavy equipment. So I thought this would be great, uh, you know, and I needed volunteers to push, shove, otherwise get the rock off. The contractor had supplied rock to us before, so he knew what kind of rock we needed, the baseball size, clean stone around it. And so, uh, Bottom line is he agreed to do it. We phoned, uh, Melissa came out, did a site inspection. I took her out in my boat. We looked at the existing shoals. They're shoal spawners in Long Lake, not on rivers or creeks. Mm -hmm. um, so the two islands in the middle of the lake are very exposed to full fetch of the westerly wind and it's an ideal place for Wally to spawn and they do use it. But it could be enlarged, it's a very limited area. 
So Melissa came out, looked at it, took some pictures, said we can go ahead with the project. You looked after the permitting from yes. MR and F, which you had no problem. No. Ironically, <laughs> ironically, in my first days with MNR, one of my jobs was approving or denying work permits to do work in the water, but they took that power away from me when I retired. <laughs> but I'm glad you got it. Yeah. So that was it nice. helps you have a good name, too. <laughs> so we got approval. Uh, we were going to do it in the summer. The contractor took a long time to find the right rock. The summer was progressing into the fall. It was getting late. Um, I kept people posted on our Facebook page from mm -hmm. our association because I was really wanting those volunteers yeah. and uh, kept them posted and, and finally it was just getting too late in the fall. Finally. So, but Mother Nature okay. doesn't always cooperate with you, right? So we only have this funding until March 31st. So we're like, oh my God. Do we have to give this back? I don't want to give this back. <laughs> so we decided to go with plan B after several discussions. Um, we had um, um, Ann Bendig, who's actually in the back of the Lanarks County Stewardship Council, had done a winter walleye spawning bed project. And so after chatting with her and seeing her videos that she has done, I thought we might be able to do this. So we discussed it, and, and the volunteers in your association were fantastic. They were like, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> so we did it. <laughs> but we had to wait <laughs> until the ice was safe for heavy traffic. So your association was fantastic because they would go out and check the ice depths for us, make sure that it was safe. The contractor was fantastic. They, and every, they plowed a one and a half kilometer road to the islands. And um, the reason this project in particular it was so successful is the type of lake that Long Lake is. Now, there are many Long Lakes out there. <laughs> this one is near Parham in the township of Central Frontenac, just south of Charbot Lake. It does not have a very strong current. So, and the way that these spawning shoals were against the islands, the prevailing winds push against the island. Mm -hmm. So, and that's how it oxygenates the eggs. So it was perfect because their ice tends to just melt. It doesn't shift in the winter or in the spring. So we knew that this could work. I was hoping this could work. <laughs> so we set a date for February 2nd, and the week before was extremely busy. The association, the volunteers kept that road plowed. They kept the spawning beds plowed. So from the drifting snow, so we had an area, and we knew exactly where the area would be. And then on, uh, we also contacted some other volunteers. So we needed snowmobiles, ATVs, tractors, sleds, anything we could get our hands on. Um, I contacted uh, the Charbet Obajuan First Nations. The Chief Doreen and her family and her community came out. The first Drummond uh, Scout Troop came out to help move the rock. Uh, we had over 50 volunteers the morning of February 2nd. The contractor would fill the sleds and one by one they would drive across the ice. And then, oh wrong way, the volunteers were waiting on the ice, the scouts and the First Nations with shovels and dump trailers and we dumped the ice and we laid it out according to our permits and our plans so that we were in the, in the area that we wanted to be. And then, and it's true, many hands make for light work. This project took two hours. Oh, oh wrong way again. It was 30 tons of rock. 30 tons of rock was moved a kilometer and a half over the ice and laid out. We were, when we were done, we're like, this is it. Wow. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Your time. Yeah, <laughs> and we headed over to the cottage for a nice barbecue with everybody. Um, so now, though, the waiting begins. I'm like, is it going to fall in the right spot? Please let it fall in the right spot. So we waited, and we waited, and it fell in the right spot. So, <laughs> success! Um, and then you guys had volunteers that actually went out and did walleye counts, and they checked the beds, and... There were walleye on the beds two months later. So uh, I would say that's definitely a successful partnership. 
So I just want to leave with this quote, um, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world, because indeed it is the only thing that ever has. Okay? And I'd like to thank all of our partners on this project, because we couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. Thank you.